saga. This epic 30 minute saga of Bailey's professional life. <laughs> Welcome to my world. Hi, I'm Bailey Rivera, and I am a partner here at Antiquaria. Today, I want to tell you how I've made money for the last 10 years as a professional calligrapher. So in 2009, eons ago, I took a three hour script class when I was living in Dallas, Texas, and working as a visual merchandiser. I wasn't really looking for a new job, but always had been very interested in different hobbies, skill sets, anything I could do with my hands. So I was said, sure, what's another hobby? Took this three hour class and was hooked. So fast forward three months after taking that class and taking a calligraphy business class throughout that previous summer, I quit my job I moved back to Austin, Texas, where I was from, back in with my parents, thankfully, thank goodness for them, thanks mom and dad, and started my client calligraphy business. Now, I had everything set up because of this business course to get started in um, client services, but it was definitely still a huge learning curve at that point. Plus, I had only been doing calligraphy for three months, so, you know, it was still a new, new skill set to me, and there was a whole world of information still to learn. So I think why I was so drawn to calligraphy after that first class was that it was something that was creative, but also very methodical and had exemplars and you follow a plan, the A, you know, goes this way. And, you know, I just found myself coming home from work and every single second that I had, I would spend practicing writing down. Actually, what I did was I kept like a food journal and like did the whole thing in calligraphy. I would calligraphy recipes that I had um, tried. and I mean, just anything I could do to practice. When I moved back to Austin, I started my first business, which was Amon Design Studio, my client calligraphy business. And um, my focus was getting envelope work for weddings, parties, that kind of thing. So it ended up being that for that entire business, which lasted two years, yeah, three years, two and a half years, I don't know. Um, it was almost exclusively um, wedding envelope addressing. Um, I did do also some artwork for poems, for, you know, um, commemorative events. And uh, in fact, my very first calligraphy job that I was hired for with Amon Design Studio was a woman that called me and said she had a hundred year fa old family Bible and she needed all of her family members updated in it. So I said yes, because you know, you say yes to everything at the beginning. And then I was terrified um, to make a mistake in this hundred year old Bible. Um, it all worked out well, she was happy. Everything thankfully was spelled correctly and I did not spill any ink in her Bible. But, you know, talk about an immense amount of pressure in your very first go around. Um, it sort of was one of those experiences that just like, well, if I can do this and I can take this job, I can say kind of yes to anything and I'll be okay.
I was like definitely scared to quit my job and to kind of like free fall into this new career. I think the thing that I had going for me at that point in time was that I was 23. Is that right? Yeah, 23 years old. And I, you know, I had a boyfriend, but he didn't live in the same city. Like I didn't really have anything. Um, I had responsibilities, but they were minimal. Um, you know, I think being in a different place in a different stage of life, like every stage would have made that, you know, more or less difficult. It came at the exact right time for me and I was able to enact this plan. And I just, I remember, you know, being terrified of like, is this the right decision? Um, like, what if I fail? What if nothing happens? Um, but ultimately it just, it felt so right. Like I had been searching, I think kind of without realizing it for, um, how to create my own business um, ever since forever actually <laughs> um, I just it wasn't something that like I was actively seeking at the time but when it found me it was almost like stars aligned and you know once I had made the decision and had that sort of like very difficult conversation with my parents like you know this is what I'm thinking of doing and uh, so I mean, like, ah. Uh, um, once it with the decision was made, it just was like ball rolling, and I think that like there was that initial fear, but then once it started, the plan was put into place, and it was started. Like I started enacting the plan, the fear was kind of gone. It was just like move forward. This is what I'm going to do. These are, you know, the people I'm going to visit today with my portfolio. And here's like, like, here's how I'm planning to get business. And, you know, here's how I'm going to practice or make new samples or whatever, like my goal for the day. Like I was very good at having, being self-employed and actually like having those goals and doing that, um, and working full time for myself from the start, even if, my time wasn't filled with client work at that point. The work started coming in um, by no means full time, but I was getting busier and busier and like job here, job there, um, continuing to get my work out there and shown to places. And one of those places was a stationery shop in Austin, um, actually very near to where I was living. And I happened to meet Emma there because she was working as one of the invitation designers and consultants. Um, so when I went in to introduce myself, uh, she was one of the people working there and we had a conversation and I showed her my work and you know it was very simple short sweet I think I introduced myself to the owner of the shop gave them my card and was kind of out of there um, and the next time I heard from her was because Emma was getting married and so she actually had liked my work and called me to ask if I could address her wedding invitations. Um, and so after that, we kind of, um, we were working together and we became friends. So Emma's invitations were all in the mail and everything. And we ended up getting together um, for a happy hour. And over margaritas just kind of almost had a brainstorm session um, impromptu and kind of about what we kind of saw for the wedding industry and what we wanted to see, especially since Emma was getting married, she was dealing with vendors and everything. And so we decided at that happy hour to go into business and to start Antiquaria. And because I had my own calligraphy business and Emma was like already working for invitation design, Antiquaria, this business um, was going to be a vintage dish rental company. And while that initial idea did not pan out, um, it did not mean that the business did not take shape. And um, we were off to the county clerk to register it the very next day. 
we ended up starting Antiquaria as a vintage housewares company with a vintage registry. So using vintage dishes and um, housewares for brides and grooms to register for really cool one of a kind things. And so that's how we got started with this business. Meanwhile, I was still growing my calligraphy business and Emma was still working on her invitation portfolio and working at the invitation store. So we were working, I was working mostly full time with my calligraphy business and um, was doing antiquaria in my free time, if you will. So it was an interesting time of my life um, because there was, it was actually really exciting. There was a lot of cool stuff going on and all of it was growing and growing organically. So, um, and of course the best part of that was starting Antiquaria and partnering up with Emma, my cohort in design. It took me about a year to get my books to be full-time work with calligraphy with Amon Design Studio. And that grew to be, I mean, it was eight hours a day of addressing envelopes or doing pieces. And then in any free time, I was working on Antiquaria. And so that was for 2010 and 2011. And then in 2012, um, kind of serendipitously, I guess, Emma's husband and my boyfriend and then fiance, they both got, well, Emma's husband got a job in, out in Los Angeles and um, my now husband got accepted to grad school at USC. So if I wanted to, um, <laughs> stay with Anna Aquaria and stay with my boyfriend, I was to move to Los Angeles. Um, so I ended up having to shut my calligraphy business down um, at that juncture and uh, make Anna Aquaria full time. And the reason why I decided to um, close Amon Design Studio at that point was one, because Antiquaria was growing and consuming you know, more of my time, but also because my calligraphy business in Austin was very local. I did not have any clients without of, like outside of city limits with the exception of, I think, two in the three years that I ran that, like, and they were even fairly local, like within Dallas and San Antonio. So like the wedding planners were literally driving the envelopes up at that point in time, shipping your envelopes back and forth was a unnecessary risk. Um, and one that like a lot of clients and wedding planners wouldn't uh, a risk that they wouldn't take. So anyway, my, that business was so localized that that was what made the most sense for me at that point. So the way that Antiquaria was able to not be a sort of local company was the fact that from the very beginning, we had set ourselves up to service, um, bridal registries nationwide. And um, after a little bit of time as well, we had added custom rubber stamps to our assortment. So it was something that I wasn't doing through my calligraphy business and Emma wasn't doing um, for the stationery shop she worked at. So there was like no competitive um, issues with adding those to Antiquaria. So we had created this national audience for um, the bridal registries as well as the custom stamps. And we had partnered early on in creating the custom stamps with the blog Oh So Beautiful Paper and Noel, the wonderful writer of that blog. And we did DIY tutorials for her every week for years. And we did them using our custom stamps. So many, many people found us, found our stationery, found our calligraphy initially, 
from those tutorials and from us selling custom stamps. And so when we did make the shift to, you know, adding wedding invitations and expanding that stationary side of Antiquaria, um, we already had that national market of, you know, the oh so beautiful paper readers and the people that we had cultivated within our newsletter list, everything. It wasn't ever a local community. Even though I had to close my business, um, Amen Design Studio, when we moved, I actually did not stop doing those things, stop um, addressing envelopes or working on wedding invitations or anything because we now had that and had moved that to the umbrella of Antiquaria. So with us both working full time, at Antiquaria, we were doing our housewares business and also what we were doing previously. So Emma designing um, invitations for us and me doing calligraphy for those invitations as well as addressing envelopes for our Antiquaria clients. And the difference now was that our business was not localized, it was actually national and actually international where we were servicing clients um, where we were shipping the envelopes around we were shipping the invitations we were doing the entire suite in-house for those clients so it was um, it was a transition but it was also familiar because it was what we had already been doing but just for antiquaria itself over the years, um, and I, I forget even which year it was, um, you know, looking at our business numbers, it was very clear that while the housewares portion, you know, still made us like a good amount of money, that the stationary portion was like growing exponentially and the housewares was staying at a more stable base. So because we were a two person team with no other help, it made sense for us to really take like a good look at that and decide to let that portion of the business go so that we could focus solely on, you know, servicing custom clients and, you know, designing wedding invitations, addressing envelopes, um, but as well as adding wedding invitations that actually were less um, less time intensive and so could be more affordable for our clients. So we took you know some of the best selling invitation we we had designed and we made them um, to be standard invitations that you could buy on our website. So we were able to service a broader range of wedding clients um, through we had you know sort of our budget option which was you know doing it all yourself through um, custom stamps which we were still creating tutorials for as well as um, now this sort of like mid-tier of um, our uh, wedding invitations that were our best sellers that you could just order on the website and they were beautiful and letter pressed um, but there was less there was less customization in them and then we had our bespoke clients which we did the whole you know custom design uh process for giving them you know starting with their inspiration and giving them multiple samples to choose from and just like working to make it um a completely custom suite for them so that was the direction we moved the business into because that's where we saw a lot of the growth coming from. In 2014, um, we took a class on trade shows. So it's called Trade Show Bootcamp. And it was something that we thought was interesting. And our goal for that and actually taking that was to make invitation portfolios that, or invitation um, books essentially that stores, retail stores would carry and we would um, fulfill those invitation orders that we were taking from the stores. And we thought, okay, great. This is going to be an awesome way to expand our reach and our business um, because we have had, especially at that point, 
amass like a very large collection of invitation suites that we designed over the past, I guess that would make like four years of working. And so we took this class and our takeaway from it was that that was maybe not the right way to go, that it was very expensive to make these books and um, fairly hard to make the sale. Obviously you're not in control of the sale like in the store itself. And um, so it was, we weren't sure that the time investment was going to be worth it. But what did keep being hit home was um, card sales, um, greeting card sales, paper products, stationery. And so we're like, oh, that's interesting. Like, you know, a card, a greeting card wholesales for something like 250 and retails for like $5. I mean, that's what ours costs now. And how on earth, you know, do you make a living doing that? And um, we thought, well, I, I don't know. People won't stop talking about it. Like, you know, this being like a big thing, we had no idea but that sounds amazing, like, can we do that? And so we, for the first time, sort of since we were curating dishes ourselves, were able to just collaborate with one another and start designing our products. And so we ended up putting out, you know, a small assortment of products for wholesale in 2014. And that was sort of um, another like big, turning point for our business was like utilizing our talents in this other way that we weren't even we didn't even really like consider as an option before taking that and it was um it was a big change for us because like for me you know i was able to be so much more experimental with my lettering um I could do any style that I wanted to suit the card that we were doing. Emma could paint and draw, you know, any sort of thing that she wanted. You know, it's just like a sort of um, freedom from that sort of client directed business that the wedding invitation portion was. So, creatively, like that was very, very inspiring to us and that we could just have, you know, meetings with one another and decide what we like were inspired by and thought was cool. And so it pushed everything in kind of a different direction um, once we made that move to also offer wholesale and a product line. It took about a year, um, but Wholesale really started taking off and we expanded the product line and um, we're really having a good time with that. And it became a really big part of our business, um, surprisingly actually to us. And it made us consider like, how do we manage this? Because between, you know, weddings and wedding clients and, our wholesale line, it was almost like we were running two different businesses. Um, they were like, the tasks were structured very differently and shipping was structured very differently. And it just started to feel really overwhelming. Um, again, it was, we were just a really small team at that point. It was Emma and myself. My mom was doing um, the shipping out of her house at that point. And so, we had to make a really hard decision and figure out how we were going to manage. And it kind of, um, it kind of came at the right time that we needed to make that decision because for me, I had gotten, um, this was, you know, I'd been doing calligraphy professionally for five, six years at that point. And, um, I have to say like, I was straight up burnt out. Like I was burnt out of addressing wedding invitations and, um, like having to do that and meet the deadlines. I feel like the deadlines were like the worst part for me. Um, I enjoyed addressing them, but it was just, um, it didn't leave me with a whole lot of time to, do anything else or learn anything else or practice or get better. I just was like doing calligraphy to do calligraphy. So kind of like over time killed my joy for 
what I love. And so while it was really tough to make the decision, moving away from doing wedding invitations and addressing and just like saying no to those opportunities and to like that side of the business, like ended up being a really good decision for me personally, for my passion for calligraphy as well for, as for Antiquary, because at that point, we were able to like focus on our product line, what we wanted to do, and it enabled me to reinvigorate my love for lettering and calligraphy in like so much greater of a way because now instead of, you know, working with clients and addressing envelopes and using that as my practice, I was actually able to like study and learn and um find my passion again and where I wanted to grow in the art form. And so that was a really important step for me in my calligraphy journey. And um, it has put me at the place where I am now as a calligrapher. Burning out was really tough um and i have to say it was it was a challenge to get my mojo back for calligraphy um and i think what did it was um taking classes again and um specifically a class that i took at a calligraphy conference in California called Letters California Style. And it was with Jake Weidman, um, who's actually now a friend of mine, but he's a wonderful, wonderful artist and calligrapher. Um, and I will link his information below because you definitely need to check him out. But he, in his class, um, taught flourishing. And this was something that I really had never done before. And I just loved it. And it like, sparked something kind of like that first class for me. It sparked something new and just like I got really excited. And in combination with that, Jake had told me about this thing called Iampeth. And um, Iampeth is an organization that um, reveres and um, commemorates the golden age of penmanship, which was, you know, the early 20th century, late 19th century, and it was with ornamental penmanship and all this offhand flourishing and all this stuff that like was a whole new world for me. And so what he told me was like, you got to go to this conference, you will find your people. And that is that was sort of the beginning of this like new calligraphy phase i guess if you will for me was you know finding out more cuz i did know about iampeth but really finding out that iampeth was more than just like an awesome online resource because it is it has amazing rare penmanship books and you know i mean it's just a trove of information for study but going to the conference, meeting the teachers and the other students. And that just, um, that was what ultimately launched me out of burnout. Now, um, ever since moving away from wedding invitations, um, my job as a calligrapher is to study and grow and um, learn and use you know, my lettering and like the new techniques and new styles and everything that I've learned on our product line. Um, and sometimes with branding clients or something like that. But for the most part, it's used uh, mostly in our products, our greeting cards, our notebooks, um, packaging, everything like that. Um, and this is definitely one of my absolute favorite ways that I've ever made money as a calligrapher. Uh, it is so rewarding to create something and then see it out in the world in a store or a client show, show you that you, they found it in Paris or, you know, it's just like the coolest thing in the world. Um, and then the other side of that, that I also, um, still work on in calligraphy is I am a teacher. I study and I learn and I explore things to grow myself so that I can create curriculum 
for classes. And I think where I've landed is the right fit for me. It's what I love about calligraphy and how I love to explore calligraphy and how I like to practice. And I just, um, it's been a really cool journey and I wouldn't have had it any other way. So I guess what I want to convey in this video is that you can do a lot of different things um, as a calligrapher and you can make money in a lot of different ways as a calligrapher. And I think that is what makes this profession really awesome. And not to say it's like without its challenges at all, but I love that I've been able to shape my future and my career and my income following my passions and my love for calligraphy. So I just want to encourage you um, to keep following your dreams um, with what you're doing, whether it's calligraphy or something else. I think that having people passionate about their livelihood and their work is a really cool thing. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm happy to have you on this journey with me and I would absolutely love to know what your dreams are for your calligraphy practice and where you see it heading for you. And of course, if you have any questions for me, I would love to know and answer them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. First business, which was and so, which is not antiquaria. Um, this is how I make money. Let's get rid of what? Murder hornets. Or, is, or did that happen? I don't know. We would love for you to join us here each week. So don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can find out as soon as our next video drops. Find us over on Instagram at Antiquary Design, and if you found this video helpful, hit the like button or comment and let us know. Thanks again!